start off with Jeff Spiegel. Mac, if on Christmas Eve you're so blessed to be named a Heisman finalist, how much would it mean to you to have Devontae Smith also named a Heisman finalist? Huh. Yeah, that's kind of just a hypothetical question. I mean, we're not really focused on that right now, so that's, that's a while away. And I think if we just keep winning games and everyone's playing at a really high level right now, if we just continue to do that, then you know, the awards will come. But at the end of the day, I mean, you know us at Alabama, we're just trying to win games and the other stuff just takes care of itself. John Zener, over to you. But Heisman aside, would, would you say Devontae is one of the best players in the country? Yeah, I mean, Devontae, you can see it if you watch the games. I would assume you can watch the games and turn it on and see that Devontae is, is one of the best players in the country. And he goes out there, he makes plays, but he does it because he trains really hard in practice and he puts the extra work in. Um, and he's been doing that for four years here. And he's been doing that for a long time, even before he got here. So, I mean, he makes plays, and that's what type of player he is. And, and he's a, a great player to have on our team. Aaron Suttles, you're up. Mac, when you, when you let that ball go toward the end of the first half that Devontae caught that's obviously gone viral, did you think it was inbounds? Do you think <laughs> it was a play to be made? And two, what's the greatest catch you've seen him make? Um, yeah, so a quick story about that pass we ran the same play versus Missouri on the 18th play of the game versus Missouri in the red zone and I like threw the same pass but I threw it too far to the right and it was actually out of bounds like Smitty wasn't mad at me but he was like just throw it up just throw it up so eight games later <laughs> we run the same play and Smitty um, you know had a great route on Stingley and I just kind of threw it up towards the back <laughs> and obviously Smitty helped me out and made a great play so I guess that just goes back to trust um, and from a great catch standpoint, I don't know. There's, I mean, there's a, high, a highlight reel that goes on for forever with Smitty. And uh, I mean, I don't really have like a specific one, but you know, if it's one on one, I'm going to throw it up to him and hope that he can continue to make plays. Tony Sakalas, you're up. Mac, a lot has been said about you and Najee and Smitty, but how great has the offensive line been? And, and with it being the holiday season. Have you uh, thought about maybe uh, giving them some, something back? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And our offensive line has done a great job this year. Um, they're definitely one of the best offensive lines in the country. And they need to get the recognition they uh, deserve. And they've earned that on the field and in practice. But those group of guys, I mean, I love those guys. They, I don't even think I got hit maybe one time last game. Um, and for them to just protect the way they've been protecting, it's just a huge hats off to them and Coach Flood and, and Coach Sark for giving them a great uh, game plan. Um, and yeah, the holiday season, I'll have to come up with something to give them or something like that. But <laughs> right now, we can't really go out to eat. But we kind of went out to eat in the past. Um, but with uh, COVID and stuff, it's hard to get together. But we'll figure something out for those guys. Charlie Potter, you're up. Hey, Mac. Uh, Coach Saban called this a historic game because it's one step closer to an undefeated season. I know you guys always want to win the next game, but has that possibility of going undefeated, has that been openly discussed at all? Yeah, I mean, we kind of talked about that as a, a beginning of the year goal. Um, obviously, playing an all-SEC schedule to go undefeated would be something that no other team has ever done just because no other teams had to play an all-SEC schedule. But at the end of the day, it just goes back to execution. Um, obviously, Arkansas has a really good team. Um, they've lost some really close games, and they could you know, have a better record or whatever people want to say. But they have great players and a really good scheme. Um, and they're going to give us their best shot, and we have to be ready to go. Next question to Michael Casagrande. Aaron stole all the questions I had asked, uh, had written down, but uh, I, uh, two quick ones. I guess the connection, what's the connection like with you and, and Smitty? Is there a special bond there that, that creates where you guys can just kind of do something without having even to vocalize it? Yeah, I mean, I think it goes back to just the years of him and I being together. Obviously, you know, early on I was the third string quarterback and stuff, but he would still come out um, and throw with me if I ever needed someone to throw routes to. So I feel like we just have that chemistry and obviously other receivers on our team is the same way. So I trust all those guys, you know, Mechie, Slade, Miller, Jaleel, everybody. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it goes back to kind of what we've done in the past and um, we just got to keep doing that. And secondly, the last four games, it seems like uh, it looks like you guys have been kind of slow coming out of the, the halftime. 
uh, punts, uh, more punts than that, that third quarter. Uh, what's Is it hard to, to get refired for that, that second half after taking big leads? Yeah, that's another really good question. Um, you know, I've been trying to find ways to just um, raise our energy coming out at halftime. I think part of that is just getting warmed up a little bit more. Um, and we'll have to find a way to do that and just get our heart rate up so we're ready to kind of go in the second half. Um, but at the end of the day, you got to just go out there and treat it like play by play. It doesn't matter if it's in the first play of the game or in the first half or the second half, but we definitely have to address that. And I'm sure our coaches will come up with ways to um, help fix that. Over to Haley Sutton. Hey, Mac, you touched on a little bit about how COVID has changed the way, you know, the whole season has been. Um, has it made you kind of more appreciative knowing that you've made it through pretty much the entire season and you still got an SEC championship and bowl games and stuff like that to play? Yeah, we're definitely really grateful. I mean, there was a time, obviously, in the summer when we didn't even know if we were going to get to play together. And I just really thank everybody around here for and in the SEC and the NCAA for just helping us out and allowing us to play. Um, you know, all of our teammates, there's a lot of ups and downs with the COVID situation, but I feel like we've done a good job managing it. And obviously, we have a, a long way to go here, but um, to be still playing is really awesome, and we're just looking forward to getting a chance to go out there this week. Ryan Hennessy, go ahead. Mac, uh, I asked Christian the same question, but you've had some games where people would call it maybe a revenge game for you or your team, but how important is it, and what have the coaches been telling you about winning with class this year, even if it could be a quote-unquote revenge game for you? Yeah, I think that's another good question. Um, I kind of touched on that in our little player-only meeting. Um, just that we wanted to go out there this past week um, and just try and win with class. And that's what we always do because Coach Saban has set that standard here. And I think we've done a good job of that this year. Um, obviously, there's more games to be played, and we have to continue to do that. And, you know, another important part about that is losing with class. So you have to learn how to do both. And I feel like we've done both around here um, really well um, just to do it with class. And it's a learning uh, process with that type of thing. And, you have to kind of set the example and, and make that known throughout the team. These will be the final three questions. AP Stedham, go ahead. Uh, hey, Mac. S say, Mac, I was wondering if the uh, Arkansas defense resembles the Missouri defense because, you know, the defensive coordinator, Barry Odom, was the head coach. Uh, have you ever reviewed that film? And then also, have you ever been to New York City? Um, yeah, that's a good question. The first one. Uh, Barry Odom, he recruit, uh, recruited me a little bit at Missouri. Obviously a great defensive-minded uh, coach. They actually do have a little bit of similarities from the last two years, obviously, with him being there. But they do have a lot of different schemes. Um, you know, they play different multiple defenses, and we have to be ready for all of them. But, I mean, at this point in the year, when you watch them on film, those guys are all playing um, gap sound, and, they, you know, they play drop eight coverage. They play man-to-man. -man, so you got to be ready for everything. Um, and I'm sure they're going to have something new for us, so we just have to be ready for it all. And I have never been to New York. Back over to Jeff Spiegel. Yeah, Mac, you're you're in the the second game of three games where you you've had to leave the bubble. Uh, how stressful is it in the COVID nineteen era to play games away from home? <laughs> uh, not not really that stressful. I mean. We, when we travel, like I just go down and sit on my seat in the plane and then get off the plane and go to our hotel room and eat the meals or whatever. But we kind of just carry that on from here, how we do it, wear your mask, spread out. And then, you know, when you're in your room, you got to be careful. Uh, just try and wash your hands a lot. But I mean, we don't really interact, which kind of sucks with like the fans who would come and watch us because, um, you know, usually you sign autographs or just hang out with the fans for a little bit which that kind of sucks this year, not being able to do that. But um, at the end of the day, you just got to protect your own bubble. And obviously, Alabama football does a good job of doing that. And we'll finish up with Charlie Potter. Yeah, Mac, I just want to ask you about Landon. Uh, he's a guy that seemed to be uh, have a lot of antics on the field Saturday, whether it was you know blaming LSU for jumping off sides or that flop that went viral. Is, <laughs> is he a guy that you would say kind of is good at getting under people's skin? Yeah, uh, Landon's definitely uh, a great guy, and I'm glad that he's out there having fun because it just makes it better for everybody. Um, at the end of the day, he's having fun, and he's also doing a great job with protections and keeping the line all together as one. So they're operating as a unit, 
and I think Landon's a big part of that, but it takes all five of them. Um, and I'm just glad to have Landon. He's a great addition to our team, makes everything fun during practice. And as you all see in the games, he obviously makes it fun too. <laughs> That's all the questions we have. Thank you, right. Mac. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a good Monday.